Hello everyone, my name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute. Welcome to Preston's Ponderings. We are investigating Matthew 16, 27 and 28, where our Lord said, The Son of Man will come in the glory of the Father with his angels, and shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, There are some standing here which shall not taste of death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. What a fantastic prophecy. I've been sharing with you how verse 27 and Jesus' promise of his coming in judgment is grammatically and undeniably connected with the previous verses by the little Greek particle of the Greek word gar translated as for. Now, I cannot overemphasize this. This is really critical. The judgment of verse 27, Christ coming with his angels in the glory of the Father to reward every man, is grammatically and undeniably linked with the previous verses and Jesus' prediction of his suffering, verse 21 and following, and the suffering of his disciples, verse 23 and following. In other words, to put this simply, Jesus' promise to come in judgment, in the glory of the Father, is the promise to come in judgment of those who kill, who were going to kill him and who were going to persecute his disciples. I've shared with you the connection with Matthew chapter 23 and the connection likewise with 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Just as Jesus in Matthew chapter 16, 21 to 28, predicted his suffering, that of his disciples at the hands of the Jews, his coming in judgment of those who were going to kill him and persecute his disciples in the lifetime of that first century audience. Paul was addressing the Thessalonians who were at that time being persecuted by the Jews and Paul said that Christ was coming to give them, that is the Thessalonians, relief from that persecution when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in flaming fire with his angels. See, exactly like Matthew 16, 27. Now, let's expand this study to involve the book of Revelation. Let's look very quickly again at the constituent elements of Matthew 16, 21 and following. Point number one, Jesus predicted his death. The Son of Man must betray, be crucified, buried, and rise again. Jesus predicted the suffering of his disciples, verse 23 and following. Jesus predicted his coming in judgment. Furthermore, that judgment is, as we've just seen, directly connected with the suffering of his disciples and his own death. He then predicted that it would come at the time of his coming in the lifetime of the audience standing there, and it would be the time of his coming in the kingdom. How does that compare with the book of Revelation? Well, simply stated, it agrees perfectly. Notice now, Matthew 16, 21 and following, Jesus said the Son of Man must go up to Jerusalem and there be betrayed by the scribes and the Pharisees. Who was it that Jesus was, going to, was blaming for his death? Obviously, it was Old Covenant Jerusalem. Watch in Revelation chapter 11, verse 8 that a judgment was coming upon, quote, the city where the Lord was slain, unquote. Uh, we don't have any trouble understanding where the Lord was slain, do we? It is also the city spiritually called Sodom, and the only city in all of the Bible that is ever uh, metaphorically and spiritually called Sodom is Jerusalem. Jesus, therefore, said that it was Jerusalem that was going to kill him. Revelation speaks of, a, of an impending judgment of the city that killed Jesus. Point number two, Matthew chapter 16, Jesus predicted the suffering of his disciples. In Revelation chapter 17, verse 6 and following, we see Babylon, the great harlot city depicted as holding a cup. What's in that cup? The cup is full of the blood of the disciples of Jesus. Matthew 16, Jesus predicted the suffering of his disciples. Revelation chapter 17, 
Babylon is guilty of shedding the blood of Jesus' disciples. The judgment in Matthew 16 was coming as a direct result of Jesus' death and the suffering of his disciples. In other words, it would be the judgment of those who had done that persecution. Guess what? The book of Revelation, the judgment of Babylon was at hand at the coming of the Lord because of her guilt in shedding all of the blood shed on the earth. Revelation 18, 20 and 24. Jesus said his coming in judgment with the angels would be before all of those people standing there that day died. Matthew 16, 28. Revelation, now watch this, Revelation chapter 22, verse 12, Jesus said, Behold, I come quickly. Now notice the direct parallel between Revelation 22, 12, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give to every man. Matthew 16, 27, The Son of Man will come in the glory of the Father which is with his angels and shall reward every man. These are perfect parallels. Notice again, Matthew 16, 27 and 28, in the lifetime of that audience, Jesus is coming in judgment of his persecutors. Revelation chapter 22. Behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me to do what? To judge the city Babylon that was guilty of killing him and killing his disciples. Finally, notice that in Matthew 16, Jesus was coming in that judgment at the time of the kingdom. Revelation chapter 11, the judgment of the city, quote, where the Lord was slain, unquote, occurred, would occur at the time when the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ, and they shall rule forever and forever. Revelation 11, 16 and following. Now, folks, we have an absolute perfect parallel here. Jesus said he was going to suffer at the hands of the Jews. His disciples were going to suffer at the hands of the Jews. He was going to come in judgment of the persecutors. It was going to happen in his generation, and that would be the time of the kingdom. Likewise, Revelation speaks of the city that killed the Lord, was now, was now had a cup full of the blood of the disciples of Jesus. Jesus was coming quickly in the judgment of Babylon, and that would be the time at which the kingdoms of the world would become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. They shall rule forever and forever. This demands, without any equivocation, without any doubt, with no chance of, of successful refutation, this demands Christ came in the glory of the Father, with his angels, in judgment in the first century. We've got much more. Thanks for joining us for Preston's Ponderings. We'll see you on the flip side.